Hello, everybody, and welcome to the channel, Out of Ammo, Out of Time. Yes, I'm your host, Krabby Terror Aiden. Here we are in episode 51, yes, 5 1 51 of season 1 of the Investigator Games with everybody's favorite photographer and reporter, Daryl Simmons. Yes, and for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Welcome, welcome to the Investigator Games. What is it about? Well, it's like the Hunger Games. We take each Investigator true solo through a scenario. Season one, that's The Gathering. Now in season two, which is very well underway as well, that is The Midnight Masks. And in and depending on how they go, they end up in a league table like this one. Yes, and here we have season one league table. There is a league table for season two, but we're just focusing on season one at the moment. Everybody from the very top all the way down to the very bottom. Yes, and uh, you can see all of these poor hapless investigators going through the gathering 51 times through season one. They're all here. Uh, some of the early ones are a little bit ropey. Uh, I've learned as I've gone along, um, but I'm still going five years later. Yes, it's been about five years. Uh, five years this, oh, I don't know, no. Yeah, about five years getting on for uh, the investigator games. Um, yes, now if you are new to the channel, uh, new to the channel, new to Arkham Horror, the card game, um, I'm assuming you know how to play a little bit. So I would recommend that if you have never played before, please go and learn how to play. There's plenty of good videos on that. Have a go and then maybe come back. I'm assuming you know how to play a little bit, but I also recognize that people come here to see how these investigators play true solo through uh, the gathering and get an idea of the investigator and how they play, which is fair enough. So, um, yes, uh, the only other thing is shout out that I do have an in-depth video on the gathering law story gameplay. I uh, mean, myself and some other content creators have um, done that. So I would recommend you have a look at that as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through Daryl Simmons' uh, stats and, and feats and abilities, and then we will go through the deck that I put together, and then it will be time to play the Investigator games. Yeah, so Daryl Simmons is the Survivor Investigator from the Scarlet Keys expansion. He is Traded Reporter. Um, interesting, uh, be interesting to see him pair up with... Um, Rex, I suppose, bit of a journalistic duo, you might say. Anyway, he, um, even though he's a survivor, he's clearly, you can see from his stat line already that he's probably what you might call a survivor seeker because um, his stat line is sort of low for willpower of two, uh, combat of two, um, his agility is only three, but where he really shines is his uh, intellect, which is a very hefty five. Not sure if any other survivors have such high intellect. That's uh, that's really high, something we normally expect from a seeker. So uh, I think you can think of Daryl Simmons as a seeker survivor uh, in that way. Now he's an interesting um, he's an interesting uh, investigator. Um, in the ways that he is, his abilities work, which we'll talk about in a second, sort of defines a particular archetype which has not had much focus in the past, but uh, I think Daryl brings a new way of um, playing the game, if you like, to Arkham Horror, the card game. So we'll just talk about that because can be a little bit tricky to get your head around at first. I certainly found it that way. And there are some specialized cards in the Scarlet Keys expansion, which kind of play into it as well. So you start with Daryl's codec in play. So he's one of those investigators that starts with his 
key asset in play, which you may be asking then why is it a two cost asset? Well, things can happen where it ends up back in your hand. Um, so then you would want to play it out again. There's no reason why you wouldn't want it on the table. Um, I, I guess in some circumstances, if you were really desperate, you would use the pips on the side, but most of the time you're going to want Daryl's codec on the table. So you start with that in play because the synergies are quite considerable. So the first thing is if we just go back to Daryl for a second, there's this lightning action, fast action if you like. During a skill test at your location, you can spend one evidence from an asset you control, and we'll get on to how you get those. Reduce the difficulty of this test by two. So this is a little bit different to a lot of the time in you know, Arkham Horror. We are playing cards out like, you know, uh, overpower, which are improving um, your skill against a, a, a difficulty. So, for example, you would have an enemy with a fight of a fight of two. You know, Daryl here is at two, so we throw in a good old overpower to make it a four versus a two. So the difficulty of the test remains at two, but we've boosted our skill stat value to be two over. That's usually the way things work now. Um, with the evidence, what you're actually doing is reducing the difficulty of the test by two, and you can only do this once per test. So um, what that means is, is that if you were fighting an enemy with a fight of two and you spent an evidence, you would essentially reduce um, the difficulty or their fight to zero. So you're, you're, you're going up against a difficulty test of zero. Now, in the case of zero, obviously... Um, the only, the only way you're going to fail that is uh, obviously if you get an auto fail in that case because the difficulty is zero. So it uh, doesn't matter how much you minus whatever you've got, you're never going to go lower than zero. So the only way you would fail it in that circumstance. So it's, it's almost like coming at it the other way. So rather than boosting your stats to succeed, you're reducing the difficulty. And that's a really important concept, which there have been some cards like Flashlight, things like that, which have done that in the past. But Daryl is really leaning into that. So it's all about having these evidence. So the main thing is you've got to need evidence on assets you control to be able to do that. Um, so, and that's where the codec comes in because uh, codec, Kodak comes in. Kodak being a brand name for... Uh, for cameras uh, back in the day, uh, Kodak is not the uh, company it used to be. Uh, it used to be incredibly dominant in the world of photography, uh, not only in cameras, but in film. In fact, Kodak was one of the greatest users of silver uh, for, for, for decades to use in their film stock. Of course, those days are all gone. So anyway, so uh, anyway, Daryl's Kodak has a reaction trigger after an enemy or treachery enters play. So uh, that's going to happen reasonably often. Not so much, obviously, uh, in a True Solo, obviously, uh, um, but even in True Solo, um, because it's not after an enemy you draw or something. It's just whenever it enters play, you can exhaust Daryl's Kodak and put a resource on that enemy or treachery as evidence. So that evidence then goes on to that enemy or treachery. And then as a reaction trigger, after you discover any number of clues, move that many evidence on enemies or treacheries at that location or not at any location to Daryl's Kodak. So what's happening is after you discover clues, that evidence is then moving to your Kodak, which is an asset, right? And therefore, once it's on that, you can spend that evidence to reduce that difficulty. So there's a sort of a, you can see there's a synergistic effect between these two cards. The um, the the resources are going onto enemies or treacheries as evidence, and then you can, when you discover clues, you can move that evidence onto the Kodak. Uh, one on the Kodak, uh, it's on an asset you control. So you can reduce the difficulty of the test by two. So there we go. So essentially you can do that. Um, that allows you to 
do that now there are other ways of of getting that's not the only way kodak is not the only way of um getting um evidence but it is you know for daryl this is a critical way of doing things so that's the way that it works so daryl is uh, really about um um and the other thing to point out which of course doesn't matter in true solo but of course would matter in other games is during a skill test, a skill test, not necessarily your skill test. So Daryl can also be spending evidence, right, uh, for other people's tests as well um, and reducing their difficulty as well. So there's a... Uh, and I've seen Daryl in play um, by those who really know what they're doing. Uh, you can really set up quite a lot of synergies with this where uh, you get lots of evidence and uh, lots of clues and things so it can really kind of ramp up with a really nice um, sort of synergy engine if you want to go down that path so there we go a really interesting um, interesting way to play certainly a different way to play um, and we can see his elder sign is a plus one uh, pretty standard place one evidence on an asset you control so yeah pretty standard there i guess from a gameplay perspective it's the idea that he's taking photos of things and those photos are capturing information and that information is being used to then overcome the mythos in some kind of way the truth is darker than any of us know now his strength is only uh, his physical um strength is only six that's probably one of his greater weaknesses particularly since he's not particularly strong on fight or e indeed even evade so you've just got to be careful with daryl that particularly in true solo uh, he doesn't get himself into too much trouble that he's able to manage uh, things as best he can um, so that's probably the, the biggest issue is just avoiding getting swarmed by enemies, particularly in true solo. Uh, that can be a bit of a challenge. Yeah. So, um, yeah, again, he, again, yes, I suppose you could use him in true solo, but given the fact that his ability can be used for other people, he's probably great in multiplayer. Uh, certainly can get clues. He's got the five intellect. But at the same time, he can help others pass their tests as well. Or if not, yeah, pass them or, you know, reduce it to zero or whatever it might be. Okay, if we just um, flip Daryl, have a look at the other side. Standard deck size, deck building options, survivor cards not to five, seeker cards not to two, neutral cards not to five. So, uh, yes, very much a survivor seeker hybrid. Uh, we have the Kodak, Ruin Film is his, his signature weakness, we'll talk about that, and one random basic weakness, we'll talk about that in a second. So this is his backstory, even while growing up in Arkham, Daryl always knew that there was something not quite right about the strange little town. After graduating from high school, he went to work for the Arkham Advertiser as a photographer, and in the years since, he scoured every inch of the city, but one but on one fateful night, he saw something truly indescribable, a horror that shook his world to the core. His editor says he was just seeing things, but he knows the truth. With his trusty camera in tow, he will not rest until he has captured photographic evidence of the horrors that dwell in the shadows of his hometown and beyond. Just one good shot is all he needs. There we go. That's Daryl in a nutshell. So there we go. So, uh, yep. Now, if we have a look at his um, at at the deck I've put together, so just in terms of the deck, um, all investigators start with a starter deck. FFG doesn't make the uh, doesn't recommend these anymore, but basically, um, you've got to you know the rules for the investigator games are that they are created from the core set and cards from the campaign that the investigator originated from, and in this case that would be the scarlet keys so that's what uh, it sort of limits the limits the 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 cards that um that that each investigator can use but it's the same for all investigators so fair enough so um we've already covered Daryl's code kodak I keep wanting to call it codec 
<laughs> which is something a bit different. Uh, Daryl's Kodak. So we'll just look at our, uh, his other other cards now. His signature treachery or weakness is called ruined film, and uh, this could be this can be quite nasty if you um, if you get it fairly early and you don't have any evidence because remove four evidence from cards you control. For each evidence you cannot remove this way, take a horror. So if you pull this fairly early in the piece, you, you're being hit with four horror right from the start. So that could really be nasty um, and could really, you know, all you would need is draw ruined film, go to the mythos phase, draw rotting remains, and it could literally be all over uh, that quickly. So uh, particularly since your willpower is only two, uh, that, that, could, that could really, really... Um, stymie things so it, it, it's one of those things it's one of those treacheries that I hear is not particularly significant or it could be incredibly significant depending on when it's drawn so that's ruined film now his uh the 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 random weakness that I drew was indebted it's a permanent you basically you just start with two fewer resources so um yeah, it's not too bad for survivors. Generally, their cards are a bit cheaper than others, but it does sort of set us back a little bit at the very start. So, uh, but you know, it's it's not the end of the world. Some people don't mind indebted because you you know your weakness is essentially gone. It's out of the way. It's done at the very beginning. Other people think it really slows you down at the very beginning when things are critical. Uh, so it's a sort of a polarizing weakness in terms of whether people think it's it's bad or good. Um, just on that, I did a uh, top 10 weaknesses, you know, basic weaknesses that, that people dislike the most. That's on this channel if you want to go and have a look at that. So there's the weaknesses. Now, the first thing I've done here is just cover off the cards that sort of lean into Daryl's ability to, to reduce um, to use evidence and also reduce um, r reduce difficulty. So let's start with dissection tools. I would have liked to also have used something like the Hawkeye folding camera, but that can't be used because it's not in the basic set and it's not in the Scarlet Keys. But here we have a similar kind of card called dissection tools. It's a two cost asset, comes with an agility pip, which you know, never goes astray either. It has a reaction trigger. Now it's a tool that takes up a hand slot. After an enemy at your location is defeated, place a resource on this card as evidence. So that is an evidence. And you can see here, um, one or more evidence gets you a plus one to your agility, which is very welcome for Daryl. Two or more evidence gets you plus one. Now the thing is, uh, again, um, <laughs> um, you can um, you can spend that evidence then uh, from an asset you control. So uh, it doesn't have to be the Kodak. It could actually be the dissection tools. And the thing is, you don't have to just, it doesn't have to just be the three or more evidence. So two or more gets you plus one fight, three or more gets you plus one sanity, but you can keep putting more evidence on here if you want, uh, and then you can use it uh, down the track. So um, yeah, that's dissection tools. So there's a synergy there. This next card, uh, Exploit Weakness, is also a two cost. This is a two cost, but an event. Fight and a, a, a agility pip. Now, uh, fast play before revealing a chaos token during an attack or evasion attempt you're performing, and only if the difficulty of this test is currently zero. This test automatically succeeds instead of this test normal effects. Discard the attack or evade an enemy, and if it's elite, automatically evade it and deal it three damage instead. So I uh, I used this card last week um, when I played Carlson. I misunderstood this card because I didn't I I, I hadn't played Daryl yet. So I'd assume this card meant that you could play skill boosting to get you to zero. That's not the way that it works. It works the other way, which is you use Daryl's ability and maybe other abilities in some synergistic situations where you can reduce the difficulty of the test by two. Now you can only do this once per test. So it, you know, you can't keep stacking it. But you know, there's fairly, you know, there'll be a number of um, enemies with a fight of two. Um, so if you get them to zero, you automatically succeed. 
So, uh, and if it's an elite enemy, then you deal the three damage instead. Um, in, in a related way, Shed a Light is a similar. It's another two cost event, but this one um, is for getting clues. So fast play before revealing a chaos token during an investigation you're performing and only if the difficulty of the test is currently zero. It automatically dis succeeds. You discover an additional clue and one additional clue at any location. So very nice effect. Uh, and again, um, you know, allows you to get a lot of clues very quickly. So that's really great. Uh, the other thing I've got in here is the flashlight, which is the grand, the OG of reducing difficulty back from the core set where spend a supply, investigate, your location gets minus two shroud for this investigation, which essentially is reducing the difficulty by two. So you can see a situation where you could use the flashlight to investigate uh, and you could use the evidence and you could get a four shroud location down to zero in that case. So that seemed like a nice um, a nice synergy there with flashlight. It gives flashlight a new lease on life in a way. It's really good. Um, again, though, a two cost asset. So those are all the cards that lean into Daryl Simmons's ability we've got in there. Now, obviously, it's true solo. So Daryl need, does need to be able to fight. No choice on that. So I've got a few cards to do that. I've got a good old baseball bat um, where you can fight. You get plus two for the attack. So that's going to get our fight up to four, which is respectable. It deals plus one damage. Unfortunately, if you get a skull or an order fail symbol, then you have to discard the baseball bat. That's the only downside of it. But it does reasonable damage. On top of that, I've also got the knife which gives you plus one for the attack, but also with the knife, you can discard the knife. You're essentially throwing the knife, I suppose. You get plus two for the attack and it does plus one damage. So uh, you can use it to do extra damage. And indeed, uh, Mind Over Matter is in here, which you can fast play during your turn. You can use, and basically it turns your intellect into fight or evade, which is a five. Uh, well, you're only doing one damage though. Uh, in that case, so, um, but, um, you know, it, it allows you to really improve your um, fight if you've got mind over matter, uh, even if you're just punching, like I said, doing one damage. So hopefully they're all going to help in terms of taking down the ghoul priest. I've also got a couple of overpowers in here as well. So you can see a situation where we can use some evidence to reduce the difficulty of the skill test, and then we can use things like overpower to boost the skill test as well. I think uh, just thinking about that, I should have probably mentioned actually that, um, which is really kind of part of this, is I've also included scavenging in the deck, which is a one cost asset. Uh, down on the table, after you successfully investigate by two or more, exhaust scavenging and choose an item card in your discard pile, add it to your hand, which means that if we do lose the baseball bat, if we do have to throw the knife, if we've got scavenging out, we can bring those cards back to our hands so we can reuse them again. So, um, you know, it means we can recycle our, uh, our weapon cards if we really need to. Okay. Now, in terms of clue getting, we've already got a five intellect, so we shouldn't have too much trouble there. But I've included Milan Christopher for obvious reasons, uh, plus one intellect, which means we'd be running at a six. Successfully investigate, gain a resource. It, we're not playing taboo here. And then on top of that, I've got deduction, which allows you to, obviously, if the skill test is successful, you can discover an additional clue. So that's all good. So they're the main cards in terms of fight and clue getting. Obviously, the clue getting with Shed a Light adds to that. And then obviously, Exploit Weakness is adding to the fight. And then, of course, Dissection Tools works for fighting as well. So it's all nicely synergistic. I've got some extra cards in here. I've chosen the Tool Belt as well. And the reason for that is that uh, I think it takes up a body slot. And also, the Baseball Bat takes up two hand slots. Knife's a hand slot. Uh, dissection tools as a hand slot so hand slots might be quite 
challenge. Oh, and the flashlight. So without the tool belt, we might find it a bit difficult to manage everything that we need, particularly because the baseball bat uses up two hand slots. So with the tool belt on board, it's less of an issue. We can kind of swap in and out. Um, in that way so yep um and then finally we've got a couple of luckies well they never go astray we've got a couple of guts because you know we sometimes you know we get a rotting remains we want to make sure that we're not taking too much horror and then a couple of emergency caches so there we go i don't know what do you think um i think uh, i think if we can get all the right cards i think daryl will be fine I think if we don't get all the right cards, things could be challenging. I mean, you shouldn't have any difficulty getting clues. It's more when it comes to the fighting. So that's going to be the thing that we're going to have to make sure that we've got the right cards for. Otherwise, yeah, things are going to be quite difficult for us. Okay, so Dino, what do you think? That's the deck we've put together. Let's close and shuffle that and put that in. Let's shuffle that up. And let's good old shuffle up the good old uh, encounter deck. Now, I spoke to Daryl um, in the green room. Uh, he's quite an erudite chap. Nice, had a good chat to him. He took a couple of photos of me. I think they're quite flattering. Black and white, quite nice. Yeah, he's, uh, he, he's certainly a good photographer. He did say he is available for weddings um christenings weddings bar mitzvahs you name it he is available if you're around the arkham area you can um you can hire him out um to do those sorts of things um so bear that in mind let me know if you need his contact details is he going to do well in the investigator games what does he think about that he uh he thinks he's going to do okay, but he's got some questions about some of the areas he thinks that he's concerned that maybe places like the attic and the cellar are hiding some uh, things uh, that are meaning that certain investigators get advantages over others. I don't know what he means by that. He seems to think there's something there. I said, well, if you can show me the evidence, then uh, we will definitely change the way that we're doing things. So, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Okay, so he's uh, he's in the study, uh, walking around, taking some photos of uh, things as the crowds come in. So we're just waiting for the horn to go off. And while we wait, let's read out the agenda and the act deck. What's going on? It's late at night and you're holed up in your study researching those bloody disappearances that have been taking place in the region. Oh, those, all those bloody disappearances. A few hours into your research, you hear the sound of strange chanting coming from your parlour down the hall. And at the same time, you hear dirt churning if something were digging beneath the floor. And trapped as you leap to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving only behind solid wall. You're trapped inside your study until you can find a way out. We're in standard difficulty here in Octagon. And we are just waiting. Oh, there it goes. There goes the horn and the crowd goes wild. And we are ready to play episode 51 of season one of the Investigator Games. <laughs> Okay, so what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Let me just shuffle everything up again. So yeah, look, getting a malign Christopher would be good. Getting a weapon would also be good. I think they're the main thing. So let's draw many. Let's see what we get. So we'll draw our cards. And well, look, there's the baseball bat right off the bat, so to speak. <laughs> so that's good. Um, yeah, emergency cash is also good because we don't have a lot of cash. So knife is good. Lucky is good. Guts is good. I mean, the only thing we're sort of missing is Malign Christopher, but we've got emergency cash. So I feel like we could actually kick off with these. Um, guts is good because if we get some rotting remains, it means that um, we're not in too much of a pickle so to speak and having to lose something so i think i might keep these as they are and kick off with that i think that that's a pretty good start so uh yep 
let's um, let's get going then. So, uh, okay, first action. Let's use. Do we need to use that? No. Let's uh, spend two. Actually, do we want to bring out the baseball bat in the early stages rather than the knife? Um, three. Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's bring out the baseball bat as a start so we can sort of deal with any enemies that we might get. That's the first thing. Uh, second thing, let's go ahead and get these clues. So second action, we're looking at a two versus a five. A two versus a five. Let's see what the chaos bag has as minus one. So we succeed, and let's do that again. And the chaos bag gives us a plus one, and we also succeed. So that's good. We've gotten both of our clues. And there's our first turn right there. So pretty standard start, what I would have hoped. We've got ourselves out of weapons so we can deal with whatever <laughs> the game throws at us from an enemy perspective. Um, we got both of the clues in the study, but I'm not going to throw them in yet because if we get a monster or an enemy in the uh, first draw in the mythos phase, we can get rid of it without having to deal with it. So uh, that will just make things fast. So yeah, pretty good start. Um, pretty happy with that. So let's just move forward into the enemy phase or yes, the enema phase as we call it. And there are no enemies Indeed, there are no enemas to speak of. So let's move into the upkeep phase. And there is Milan. Yay! Okay, we've got something that we can do uh, next time. So that was good that we got Milan. So I'm very happy with that because if nothing else, if we get our weakness, uh, we can soak some horror. Um, because in a solo play, getting down evidence is just not as easy as it would be in multiplayer. Um, so yes, anyway, enough of that. Let's move in to the Mythos phase and the first Doom is down. So let's see what we get from the good old encounter deck and we get the Flesh Eater right off the bat. Now, um, the thing is, is that even though I've put these out in the gathering, not the return to version, but in the original gathering, um, you can't put the Flesh Eater out because the attic doesn't actually exist. So uh, it doesn't go into the victory display. It just doesn't do anything, um, which is a bit unfortunate because it would have been nice to have had the Flesh Eater in the attic. But um, in reality, only the study exists. Now, that's different in the return to version, but uh, we're not playing that. So unfortunately, the Flesh Eater disappears because there is no spawn point for it. So there we go. Well, that was a little bit unfortunate, maybe fortunate in a way, because, you know, uh, we're not really equipped to take on some of those ghouls. But anyway, so there we go. There we go. Um, okay, so let's move into the good old um, investigation phase. Three actions onto good old Daryl. Okay, so uh, I think we're ready to throw in the two clues. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll throw in the two clues and we can flip the act to deck and we get the door on the floor. You notice that the edges of your newly purchased rug are tattered and mudstained. Finding this odd, that's odd, you shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug. To your surprise, you see the door leading out of your study. You slowly turn the knob and the door swings open, revealing your hallway below. You jump through the doorway, landing on your feet on soft dirt. The door to the study slams shut above you. The smell of burning wood fills the narrow hall intermingled with the scent of rot and decay. Hmm. Could have maybe said you jump through the doorway landing on soft dirt. I don't know. The landing on your feet on soft dirt is a little bit... Yeah, anyway, I've read this too many times. So uh, we get rid of the study. Doink. We move into the hallway. We can reveal the hallway. And yep, and we are up to the barrier. A glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlor. As you move toward it, intense heat forces you to back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, 
You toss it at the barrier and watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Perhaps there's something in the cellar or the attic that can help. Maybe. When the round ends, the investigators in the hallway may, as a group, spend the requisite number of clues to advance, which is three. Okay. So we're here in the hallway. I'm going to do a little couple of things here now. First action, we'll play emergency cash, which gives us an extra three. So that gives us a nice five. Then we're going to spend all of it except one. And we're going to bring out the good doctor. Let's put the Kodak over here. I mustn't forget with the Kodak, um, when um, an enemy or treachery enters play. Well, an enemy did enter play, but immediately was removed. So anyway, so there we go. We are now running at a six intellect. So that was our second action. Third action, let's pop up to the attic. la di da di da up to the attic. And uh, yes, um, when we get to the attic, the carcass of a malformed beast is just all too much and we take a horror. <gasps> but I'm going to put the horror on Milan. Which is kind of ironic because he's actually dissecting a malformed beast. So why he would find the carcass of a malformed beast particularly horrifying is hard to understand. But anyway, it is what it is. So there you go. So that was uh, that was a bit of a, a nothing round. But I'm glad that we we did that. So we got ourselves an emergency cash. We used most of that cash to then bring out the good doctor. And then we got ourselves up to the attic. So next time we can get these clues. So things are going pretty smoothly at the moment. At the moment. Enemy phase. There are no enemies to speak of. Move into upkeep and we get the dissection tools. Nice. The only problem is <laughs> we've got the baseball bat. So unless we get the tool belt, the dissection tools will be sitting in our hand. Which is a bit of a pity. I mean, we could get rid of the baseball bat and have the knife and dissection tools, but I don't feel like that that's a particularly good idea. So hopefully if we can get the tool belt, although this isn't this isn't a, a tool, so we can't put the baseball bat in there, so maybe that's of not much help either. But I suppose if the baseball bat breaks, which it could very well break, then we can bring out some other things instead. Anyway. Okay, there we go. So we will move in to the Mythos phase to Duma down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And the encounter deck has Obscuring Fog. Okay, so it makes the attic uh, three shroud. Now it is a Obscuring Fog is a treachery and hazard. So after an enemy or a treachery enters play, we can exhaust Daryl's Kodak. Yeah. Place a resource on that enemy or treachery. So we will put a resource onto that. Yep. Um, nice. So at, that actually works out quite well because uh, even though we're plus two shroud, if we successfully, um, uh, if we then successfully discover any number of clues, we can move that in evidence to Daryl's Kodak. So there you go, that's very nice. So we'll just send that to the back at the moment. We know it's there. So we know it's there. So let's move forward into the investigation phase. Three actions onto Daryl. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Well, the obvious thing is that we're going to try and get these clues um, because uh, we wanna get these onto the Kodak. So, um, it's a one, no, no, it's not. It's a three. So it's a three and we are a six. A three versus a six. It's feel pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and investigate three versus six. Chaos bag is as a zero. So we succeed and we get that clue. And because of that, uh, any not move that evidence. So we can take that evidence, put it onto that. And the obscuring fog actually we can discard that as well. I'm assuming we can do it in that op in that order. Um, it would be a bit rough if you uh, couldn't. I don't see why you wouldn't. So you discover the clues, move that evidence, and then the obscuring fog disappears. There we go. So we've now got, if we want to, we can reduce a test by two. Now, we're not going to do that here because it's a one versus a six. So second action, we will investigate again. We get a zero, so we get that, and we get both of those clues, which means we get our first victory point, and the crowd goes wild. 
as we get our first victory point. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. So everything seems to be, ah, I'm nearly forgotten. And I know you're all screaming at me. We should also have another two uh, resources because every time we successfully investigate, we gain a resource because of Milan. Because Milan. Now, so in some games, I might stay in the attic because of the ghoul, not the ravenous ghoul or whatever it's called, ghoul. Might turn up here. However, uh, unfortunately, what's his name again? His, its name. Yeah, the Flesh Eater. Uh, unfortunately, the Flesh Eater is in the discard pile. So probably no point staying here. So let's move back to the hallway. Okay. So there you go. That was a pretty good round. So we got to we got to use our Kodak a bit, which was nice. So we drew the Obscuring Fog with a resource on it. So what we did was, first of all, we uh, got a clue, which means that we got a resource onto our Kodak. Then we got the other clue and we got our victory point and we moved back to the hallway. So next time we will head to the cellar. Okay, and these are good because if we can just build up a couple of resources, that's going to really help us with the Ghoul Priest. At the moment, I don't feel like we're ready to take on the Ghoul Priest from a fight perspective. Hopefully that will change. Move into the enema phase, no enemas, so we move into upkeep. Well, there we go. Prayers answered, so that helps. <laughs> um, very nice. Okay, so let's move in to the mythos phase, and indeed, there we go. This uh, agenda has flipped. Let's see what it says on the back. So agenda 1B, a lapse in time. Your house, your house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed and the ground the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It's almost as if you've been transported somewhere else entirely. Although every now and again you recognize elements, you recognize elements of your former home. Ah, there's my box brownie. I wondered where that had got to. Ah, there's my press pass. I should use that. The lead investigator must decide either each investigator discards a card at random or takes two horror. Now, um, we could take the two horror, which would leave us with six, but I don't think that's a good idea because our weakness would hit us for th at the moment three horror. So if we took two horror, what would be dead to six, then we could then we take three horror, and all it would take is a rotting remains and an auto fail, and it'd be all over. So I am going to unfortunately lose a card at random. I think that's a safer option. So let's do, go ahead and do that. A random discard, and we lose the knife. Well, that's okay. I mean, we've got the baseball bat, so it's not the end of the world, but it was a bit of a backup, I suppose, but we couldn't use it anyway, so there we go. We're into a rise of the ghouls. The floor beneath you is giving way, and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels, trying to find a way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do. Indeed. Okay, there we go. Let's draw from the encounter deck and see what we get. And we get a ghoul. Hello. Yes, we get a ghoul minion. Ghoul minion. Hello. Oh. So now, yes. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, after an image of exhaust, Daryl's Kodak. Kodak. And uh, put a resource on that enemy as a treachery. Or enemy and tre or treachery, sorry. Sorry, put that on an enemy or treachery as evidence. Okay, and then after you discover any number of clues. One thing I realized just playing Daryl is that actually testless clues like working a hunch are probably really good because it does mean we can um we can um automatically get clues. Um, which uh, we don't have at the moment. So there we go. Okay. So let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions onto Daryl. Now, we could just bash this um, ghoul minion. You know, we would be a, what would we be? A four, a four on a two. So we'd be two up. We could do that. It would be nice to get this, though. Um, of course, we could use our... Uh, we could use our resource to, to 
decrease the difficulty. Um, but that's kind of, in a way, that's sort of defeating the purpose. I'm wondering, we're with three. So we could use the dissection tools to try and evade the ghoul minion and then move to the cellar. And then if we discover clues... Ah, but it has to be on the location. There's no clues here. So it's either at that location or not at any location. So that doesn't work. One thing we could do if we had a more developed deck is drop clues uh, on this location and then sort of pick them up again. But And that's one thing that this sort of Daryl engine does if it's more... Um, developed is you have cards that help you drop clues and then discover clues and get resources and all that kind of shenanigans but uh, we don't have that so I think because we're in a location without clues I think we just go ahead and um, and attack the um, the ghoul minion I don't want to use my evidence on this one I think we just go and attack with plus two so we're a four versus a two we are two up so let's fight see how we go Chaos Bag gives us a zero, so we succeed, and the ghoul is killed. We will then move down into the cellar. And, and of course, as we are going down the steps of the cellar, we are showing off our snazzy camera to Milan Christopher. We're not looking where we're going, and we trip and take a tumble down the stairs, donk, 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 and we take a damage. Ouch. There we go. Okay. So final action, let's go ahead and investigate. So it's a four and we are a six. So let's go four versus six. See how we go. We get a minus two, so we succeed and we get a clue. There we go. There we go. So yeah, all pretty good. We um, we uh, killed the ghoul minion. Fortunately, there wasn't any way we could get that um, evidence of that ghoul because there was no clues in the hallway um, but that's all right we killed the ghoul minion moved to the cellar got ourselves a clue and of course that means we get a resource yes I keep forgetting that it's very easy to forget so let's go ahead and um, let's move into the good old enemy phase there are no enemies because we killed them let's move into upkeep we get another lucky well that's lucky yeah that's lucky that's good. Let's move into the Mythos phase. The first Doom is down. Let's see what the Encounter deck has. And it's got grr, grr, Grasping Hands. Yes, Grasping Hands, which is a treachery, which means uh, we can exhaust the good old, um, good old Kodak and we can put a on that, but it's not going to hang around. <laughs> uh. So uh, this would be an example because there is a fast window. I think I've got this right. I'm sure those of you who are much more uh, across the rules of when things can be done, but I'm thinking, and please let me know if this isn't true, but in this circumstance, I could probably play something like a working a hunch to get a clue as a fast action. And that would allow me to get that resource if I had that kind of card, which I don't have. Uh, I'm not going to look up the timing. I could be wrong about that. But I just get the feeling that that's probably a way you can do that with treacheries that, that don't hang around. Because once they're gone, they're gone. Anyway, Grasping Hands Test 3. Well, we are a 3 versus a 3. I mean, we've got a lucky. Um, let's see how we go on the good old chaos bag and we get a skull which is good because the, that is a zero so we succeed and that means we don't take any damage and that goes away so there we go all right let's move into the investigation phase three actions on to daryl so where are we at i mean we're we're in a pretty good place from getting a clue perspective in terms of fighting we're sort of okay but i feel like we need a bit more from that perspective so maybe drawing some more cards might be good. The only thing I'm kind of worried about is getting our weakness. 
Um, it would also be nice to have another one or two resources on Daryl's codec. It's kind of hard to pull off though, and we're just about to get the the next clue. Um, I mean, the other way is to hold off getting this clue because we might get a treachery that we can then, I mean, something like, um, I'm just trying to think. Well, yeah, something that we can then get the final clue and get that. That might be worthwhile, maybe? Is that worthwhile or should we get the clue? It might be worthwhile giving it a go because we're going to have to draw cards anyway. So maybe we do that. I'm thinking maybe we do that um, because we do need more cards. So maybe we hold off getting this clue just for now. Um, in the hopes that we might draw into some kind of treachery or enemy that then we can sort of evade and then get the clue, something like that. Let's see. So let's first action, let's draw a card. A shed a light. Yeah, I mean, shed a light is good. It's not going to work here, though, because the best we can do is reduce this to two. So unless we had the flashlight, that's not going to work. But it's got some interesting pips on it so that's good second action let's draw again and we get the flashlight yeah okay um problem is we can't bring the flashlight out so the problem is the baseball bat's great for fighting maybe i should have held off and brought the knife out first because it's and then we could have had the dissection tools right yeah so maybe maybe that would have been a better play anyway uh final action i'm going to draw another card emergency cash so we're not drawing great cards for fighting particularly okay so let's move into the enemy phase there are no enemies to speak of let's move into upkeep we're going to get rid of something here uh well the obvious thing is emergency cash we definitely don't need that so milan christopher i mean if we can evade the ghoul priest maybe right reduce the difficulty evade we can go and get leader chandler which would be really helpful. So maybe we should do that. I'm thinking that's actually a good thing to do. Hmm, okay. So uh, let's move into the Mythos phase. The second Doom is down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And it's got rats. It's got rats. Yeah, wow, okay. Um, that That's actually not bad. I think we can actually deal here. Yeah, okay. All right. I think I think I know what we can do here. So, okay. So let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions. On to Daryl. Okay, uh, first of all, sorry. I should have exhausted the camera and put a resource onto the... keep forgetting to do that. Yep. Now, this is exactly what we wanted to do. So... We could try and evade the swarm of rats, but where are three? There are three. I mean, we could make that a five, but I'm actually, do we try and do a five versus a three? So there's a couple of things we could do here. We could try and evade the rats. We could go three on three and use lucky. We could throw in dissection tools and uh, shed a light and go five versus three. We could do that. Or we can do something which is going to be definitely going to work. <laughs> and that is we could literally just um, investigate and take an attack of opportunity. And I'm thinking that's the thing to do. So we investigate. We take an attack of opportunity. Whoops. Yep. So we are investigating at a six versus a four. A six versus a four. That's two up. Let's just see. We can always use lucky if we need to. Six versus a four. Good job we didn't do anything, but that was really disappointing. <laughs> so that didn't work. Let's evade the rats. So we're a three versus a three. Let's make that a five versus a three. Chaos bag gives us a minus one. So we succeed. We evade the rats. Yeah, and let's go again and let's investigate. So uh, we are a six versus a four, a six versus a four. 
Let's make that a seven versus a four. A seven versus a four, Chaos Bag gives us a cultist, which we succeed. So um, we get the clue. Um, not only do we get the clue, but we get this resource off the rats. That's brilliant. Yeah, great. So we've done that. Ooh, okay, that was a little bit turgid. <laughs> So first of all, we tried to take an attack of opportunity to investigate, and that would led to an auto fail. Oh, I've just remembered to get a resource. Um, so we um, we auto failed on that. So then what we did was we actually <laughs> went to evade the rats and succeeded, and then we uh, got the clue and got the evidence. So we got there in the end. So there we go. So next time we can get rid of the rats and then we can start thinking about taking on the ghoul priest. So there we go. Now we've got two of these on here. Um, so that's good, which means we can now, two tests, we can reduce the difficulty by two. So that's great. Enema phase, no enemas to speak of. So we move into upkeep. We get another baseball bat. That's actually really, really good because if this baseball bat breaks, we've got another one. So there we go. Okay, let's move into the Mythos Phase 3 Doom and Down. Let's see what the Encounter deck has. Oh, it is all happening here. I didn't expect that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we get the Icy Ghoul. The Icy Ghoul in the cellar. Ha! Oh, boy. Things just got really interesting. Oh, okay. Ooh. Actually, that's another resource, isn't it? Okay, let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions on to Daryl. Okay, things just got a whole lot different here now. So, um, yeah, I think we go ahead and we fight the Icy Ghoul. I think that's the best thing to do. It's going to use up some of our resources because we're running at a four... A four versus a three. Ooh, well, we've got lucky though. Um, we could use our overpower. Hmm. Well, it's worth a victory point, and all victory points count in the investigator game. So yes, I am going to play overpower. We're going to fight with the baseball bat. Baseball bat. It's whether we use these. I want to kind of hold these for now unless we really need them but let's go ahead so we're a two a four a six a six versus a three so a three up let's see what the chaos bag has oh ouch so we were six versus three so that's two versus three but we can spend one bring out lucky and we can succeed we really are using our resources here but we do succeed which means we draw a card and we do two points of damage to the Icy Ghoul. Uh, luckily, we didn't lose our baseball bat in the process. Okay, that was our first action. Second action, we're going to fight again. So we're only a four versus a three. So I am going to use one of these. So I'm going to use one of these. Spend an evidence. Reduce the difficulty of the test by two. So this is now a one. And we are a four, a four versus a one. That's pretty good. Let's see what the chaos bag has. And it's got a tablet, which is a minus two, which is a success. If there's a ghoul enemy though, we take a damage. So we do take a damage in the process, unfortunately. But the good news is, is that, um, hmm, I'm wondering rather than, actually I've changed my mind. I'm gonna kill Milan Christopher. We've got another one. Uh, I'd rather not take the damage. But we also do two points of damage um, to the... No, tablet is okay. We do two points of damage to the Icy Ghoul and the Icy Ghoul dies. Ah! There we go. That was our second action. Ooh, okay, third action. Let's fight these rats. So they are a one and we are a four. A one versus a four. Chaos Bag gives us a minus one and we kill the rats. Wow, Daryl Simmons monster killer so that was quite a round so we first of all we fought um six versus three 
uh, we took a minus four, so we got a, so we brought out our lucky to succeed. So that was good, and then we um, reduced the test by two for the next one. And so we were going one versus four. Unfortunately, we drew a minus. Uh, sorry, one versus four. Unfortunately, we drew a tablet, which means we succeeded, but we took damage. But we we just put that on the line, Christopher, and we killed the icy ghoul, and we got a victory point. Crowd went wild. Did you hear the crowd go wild there? And then finally, we killed the rats. So there we go. So that was quite a round. Um, yes, so uh, next time we really need to start thinking about the ghoul priest and how we're going to take the ghoul priest on. Uh, it's feeling like a leader Chandler type of situation. We'll see how we go. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we've got all the clues we can get. That's all great. So let's move into the enema phase. No enemas to speak of. So let's move into upkeep and we get scavenging. Is that worth it? Um, yes, I think it is worth it. I think so. Oh, successfully investigate. Well, we're not really going to be doing any investigation. So, but it is a um, it is another intellect pip. So I'm starting to feel good about that. So let's let's do that. So fourth, we're halfway through this agenda. Let's see what the encounter deck has, and it's got rotting remains this time. Rotting remains. Test three. We are a two, but we can make that a four. Four versus three. So we're one up. That's pretty good. Let's see what the chaos bag has. And it's got an elder sign. Woo! Yes, an elder sign means we put in evidence on, on an asset we control. Well, let's stick that on the Kodak. So we're back to two evidence. That's awesome. And we also draw a card in the process. And we get the tool belt. Okay. Have we got any tools? Well, we've got the flashlight. Do we care? No, I don't think we care anymore. So there we go. All right. Okay. So that was good. Let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions onto Daryl. One, two, three. Okay. So what are we going to do? So I think... We won't bring out Malign Christopher because I'm thinking the best thing to do is to get ourselves into the parlor and um, and get Leader Chandler because then we would be running at a two, a four, a five, I think. We'd be going on a five. But the problem is we've not really got much else in terms of fight. So first of all, I'm going to move up to the hallway. Then I'm going to draw a card. Okay, exploit weaknesses of fight. And then I'm going to draw another card. And there it is. I knew it was coming. Ruined film. It's better now than later. Remove four evidence from cards you control. I can remove two evidence. Uh, two horror. Well, it's better to get it out now than later. But unfortunately, we've lost all that evidence that we'd gained, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, but there you go. That's the way that it goes. So, uh, yes. Okay, we've got to start thinking about how we're going to take on this ghoul priest. But the thing is, all our weaknesses are out. We can't draw any more weaknesses, so we can just go ahead and do what we need to do. So we move into the enemy phase. No enemies to speak of. We move into upkeep, and we get the good old dissection tools. Okay, I'm thinking, yeah, this is looking good. All right, let's move in to the mythos phase. Five of seven now. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And it's got dissonant voices still. Now, it is a treachery, um, so we can we can do that, and we can put a resource on treachery, but the problem is, is there are no more clues to discover, and we can't drop any clues either, so it's a really, it's in a situation where it doesn't matter, we just can't play any assets or events. All right, so let's move into the investigation phase, three actions on to Daryl. What are we going to do here? What are we going to do here? We've got a kind of two choices. I could bring out Milan and we could just take on the ghoul priest as we are. But I'm feeling that Leader Chandler is a better bet. I really, really do. So that's going to make a big difference. Um, so I think, and the problem is, is this, that this agenda is really moving on. So, um, yeah. 
And we've already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. Yes. So what should we do? I think the first thing we do is draw a card. What do we get? Overpower. Perfect. That is perfect. We've got an overpower. We can probably lose the tool belt, I'm thinking. That's probably what we would do. Um, it's Well, we could bring out scavenging, but why would we? Um, we could bring out the tool belt. Well, we could bring out the tool belt, actually. So that's not really helpful because we don't... The tools are... Hmm... Yeah, I mean, they're kind of a weird situation where I don't, I don't really, I want, I want to lose cards because I want them to get Leader Chandler. And at the same time, uh, what do we do? We don't need any money. We can't play cards anyway. Just realized, even though I was saying we can play this and that, but we can't. So, yeah, I just guess we take we take two resources. We've got so many of them. Okay, so that was a bit of a nothing round. All right, we'll move into enemy, no enemies. We'll move into upkeep, and we will get rid of the tool belt. We'll get rid of the, the dissonant voices. We're at the end of the round now, so we will spend the three. Oh, we got Mind Over Matter. Oh, I didn't see that. That's really good. That's perfect. Okay. We've thrown in the three. Now I feel like we're really ready. So let's flip this over. Using the barrel from the attic, you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier. The barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice, then his, hid, hidders, hisses and fades out of existence. So reveal the parlor. Leader Chandler goes into the parlor. There we go. Oh, hello, Daryl. Why don't you come and see me? We have a little chat. We can bash this ghoul priest together. And then, of course, the school, the ghoul priest, the school priest is in the hallway. What have you done? A woman with a torch stands in your parlor, a glimmer of hatred in her eyes like a Monty Python character in a movie. What have you done to my barrier? She screams furious. Before you can answer, a ghastly wail sounds behind you, and a creature wearing robes and a deer skull mask tears through the wall, advancing towards you. Okay. Hello, Daryl. Oh, what a nice baseball bat you've got. <laughs> you think you're going to bash me with that? Forget it. Okay, Ghoul Priest is seeming a bit confident. All right, let's see what the encounter deck has. And it's got grasping hands. Oh, really? Now? <sighs> Test three. See, I don't want to use these because let's just go ahead and do a three versus a three. Chaos Bag gives us a tablet. Minus two. Oh, that is nasty, isn't it? You know what? I'm going to spend one and bring out Lucky because that is nasty. So let's just do that again. So we were a three versus a three. Tablet made it a minus two, but then we made it a plus two. So we're fine. I'm not taking that much damage. That That's just really bad. Okay. Unfortunately, that's not how I wanted to use my lucky, but, you know, that's the way it goes. All right, turn 10, Mythos Phase. Ah, that's what we just did, didn't we? Yes. All right, Investigation Phase. Let's um, put three actions. Whoops, where are they? Three actions onto Daryl. Right, I want to get Leader Chandler, so let's go ahead and evade the Ghoul Priest. So it's a three versus a four. Youch, and we've lost our lucky. Oh, that's not going to be so easy now, is it? (sighs) 
We've got two choices. We can go for a five versus a four, which is not great, but you know, it could work. Or we can use mind over matter and we can, then we've got essentially a five. No, I should have brought out Milan Christopher because that would have given us a six, right? That would give us a five versus a four. So that's not much better, actually. Uh, hmm. All right, let's spend one on mind over matter. So we can evade at a five versus a four. But we can make that a six versus a four. Two up. Let's go with that. Six versus, because I need some of these to get Leader Chandler. This is really not working out the way I'd hoped. Let's go for that. Two up. Chaos back gives us two. Okay, good. So let me just check that again. So we're using our mind over matter. Yeah, that's just in here. So we're using our intellect. So we were a five versus a four. We made that a six versus a four. And so we succeeded and we evaded the ghoul priest. Where have you gone? So that was our first action. Second action, we will move into the parlor. Third action, we will parley. So it's a four versus a five, but we can make that a uh, a five, six, seven, a seven versus a four in order to parley leader Chandler. Chaos bag, it gives us a zero. Yep, we succeed. And we get leader Chandler. Very nice. Woo. Okay, so now we are now running at a a two a three. Um, is he is he a monster? He is. We get plus one damage, and we also get the baseball bat. So we'd be running at a two, a three, a five, and we would do three points of damage. So that makes a big difference. I feel like we're getting somewhere now. Okay. Let's move into the enemy phase. Enemies are evaded. Upkeep, the ghoul priest is back. We get another mind over mana. Well, that was a perfect time for that too, possibly, but probably not actually, because five versus two, four, five, but then we've got fight, so. Hmm. Um, yes, okay. Let's move into the mythos phase. Now, here we go. This is now flipped. Let's see what we get. Uh, it's the tunnels below. A feral beast, roughly humanoid, with a canine cast and cast and hooves for feet. So you see the ground in front of you. Below the floor, you can see vast tunnels beneath your house. Fiendish howling echoes deep from in the underground caverns. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Done. Discard cards until a ghoul enemy is discarded and we draw that enemy. Okay. Nope. 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 Yes, in the flesh eater in the attic. Flesh eater back again. It's time somewhere to go. That's kind of lucky that it was the flesh eater and not the ravenous ghoul so that we don't have it on us. So, uh, yes, that's that's good. I don't think, unfortunately, we're going to be able to get that Flesh Eater. Um, but that's okay. All right, they're getting out. You hear a crazed howl outside and suddenly all the creatures turn their attention to that sound. They rush to escape the house, breaking down the doors and clawing at everything in their way. At the end of the enemy phase, each unengaged ghoul enemy moves towards the parlour. At the end of the round, place one doom on this agenda for each ghoul enemy in the hallway or parlor. Okay, that's good. 
We've still got to do the good old encounter. And what do we get? We get grasping hands again. Oh boy. More damage. Okay. Well, actually, we're a three versus a three, but we can throw that in to make it a four versus a three. So we're one up. And we're not going to use my, uh, we're not going to use mind over matter anyway because we're we're going to use our fight. Um, and we can't reduce test to zero. Oh, I haven't been doing this, have I? Um, like the ghoul priest should have a resource on them. So should the flesh eater. Or oh, yes, so um, yes, I haven't been doing that because I can't use it anyway. <laughs> because there's no clues, but anyway. Uh, all right, so we are a, a four versus a three. Let's see what the chaos bag has, and it has a minus two. So I think we take one, don't we? So we're four minus two is two. Two versus three, we take a damage. Let's put a damage on two litre. Okay. All right. So yes, there's all these resources, but uh, unfortunately, uh, no clues to get um, at the moment. So uh, yes. Okay. So um, let's, yes, move into the investigation phase. Three actions on to Daryl. Okay. So I think what we do is, yep, first action, let's move back into the hallway. There you are! Yep. Second action, let's fight with the baseball bat and overpower. So what are we talking here? We're talking two, four, five, seven. A seven, a seven on a four, seven on a four. Mm, I'm thinking we make that an eight on a four. Sorry, I wanna make sure. Eight on a four, that's pretty good. Let's see what we get from the chaos bag. Chaos bag gives us zero, so we succeed. We draw a card and we do one, two, three points of damage to the ghoul priest. Whoops, not, not horror. <laughs> Uh, zero, so we don't lose the baseball bat. Great. Uh, one action left. Let's go ahead and fight again with the baseball bat. Let's throw these in. So we're talking about a two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven on a four this time. We have three up. Daryl swings the baseball bat. The crowd goes hushed. And... Whoa! Yes, it's a skull. It's a minus one, and we succeed, and the ghoul priest goes down. Ah! Unfortunately, I think we lose the baseball bat. We hit the ghoul priest so hard, the baseball bat smashes into pieces. The crowd goes wild. What a spectacle. Wow. Daryl waves at the crowd with his camera. Lita waves at the crowd with her torch. Oh, it's all happened here in the investigator games. Yeah, Flesh Eater's looking confused. Didn't get a chance to do anything. So there we go. Turn 11. And we ended up with... Um, oh, I forgot the victory point here too. My goodness. Where am I today? Um, yeah, we got the one, two, three, four, five. We got seven victory points. So that puts Daryl way up the top. That was really good. That really, really went well. There were some hairy bits, a couple of hairy bits where I didn't know it was going to go so well. Unfortunately, we didn't get to use our camera very much. Um, I guess it stopped us from taking too much horror, but we, I think we only got to use our resource one time. Uh, and that's the nature of it being true solo, but also... Um, we also got our weakness, which got, got rid of two others. But we didn't need it in the end because we got Leader Chandler. And once you've got Leader Chandler, you're, you're doing pretty well. Um, and the baseball bat held up. And so we did pretty good. So there we go. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Now, next time we will be taking the Scarlet Keys Mystic. Yes, Amina Zidane will be taking her through the gathering and we'll see how she goes. But until then... I'm Krabby Terror 8. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.